And here we go. Welcome to the Great Work Insights Podcast by the OC Tanner Institute, the show that features the people, the professionals, the thought leaders, and the coolest companies. And now your host, the man navigating the discussion about the culture, the organized chaos, and the best practices that compel great work, Todd Nordstrom. I was listening to my 10-year-old son talk to one of his buddies the other day. Actually, I should probably say that it was more like I was listening to them argue. Um, they were arguing about the, who the best quarterbacks in the NFL are today. The two boys went back and forth for a while until my, t- uh, my son said something that made me happy. It made me proud. It made me smile. My, my, as my son's buddy mentioned that, that one quarterback doesn't have any Super Bowl rings, my son responded by saying that's only because he doesn't have a good offensive line to block him. This, of course, whether you know or care about the game of football or not, is actually a huge understanding for a kid. It's a conversation I've been having with my kids in sports for a long time. Basically, it means that if everyone on the team isn't doing their job, then someone else's work is affected. At home, same thing is true. If my son doesn't, say, for example, pick up his socks, well, it means someone else has to, usually me. And that's time away from uh, making dinner. If my daughters don't rinse their plates, for example, that's time my wife and I don't have to help with homework. At work, same thing is true again. If Tim doesn't complete his work on time, then Barb is left waiting. But but what if Tim not only completed his work on time, but also made sure it was, let's say, formatted in the easiest way for Barb to use? What if instead of not just looking at how we all might create problems or hurdles for other, we begin looking at ways that we can help other people by doing our job so well that we make their job easier. Of course, if you listen to this podcast frequently, you know that I often talk about the studies we conduct at the O.C. Tanner Institute and that one of our largest studies proves that award-winning workers share one common intention, to create a result that the recipients of their work love. I'll actually provide a link to the Great Work study if you want to read it. But this concept of understanding how you impact the work of others goes much, much deeper. And my guests today can explain more because they not only study the impact we make on one another at work, but have created a game, a fun game that shows us all how much our actions, intentions, and and input affect the people we work with. Please welcome to the show Brenda Hardesty and Sue Beckler, creators of the All In Board Game. Ladies, welcome to the show. So honored to be here, Todd. Thank you. Um, Thanks, Todd. Yeah, I I, I want to talk about this game because it, it it sounds like you've made learning fun in your company. But before I do, I want to ask you a really um, when we're talking about games here, I want to talk. I want to ask a really broad and generic question. One word question: Why? Hmm. So, having worked in distributed environments in both operational and human resource roles, and in companies that were experiencing massive growth. So, for example, one startup grew from eighty to over eight hundred people in just under two years on wow. the road to our IPO. But others on a journey through massive change, the difference between success and failure kept coming back to strategy implementation. And Peter Bregman once said, your organization's biggest strategic challenge isn't strategic thinking, it's strategic acting. And so specifically, making sure that every single person in the organization clearly understands the strategy, the things like purpose, mission, vision and why it matters, where they fit in, and then identifying what they should be working on as a top priority for both individual and collective success, plus getting really good at quickly shifting as things evolve and having the allies and the support you need on an ongoing basis. That's interesting. Sue, do you have anything to add to that? Well, yeah, you know, strategic acting was actually sort of influential in my uh, work as well. 
my early career work was communications and training for uh, different large, spread out employee populations, which gave me a, a whole lot of practice in how to help people work well together, collaborate, you know, apply new skills, learn from each other. But it wasn't until I was bottom line responsible for hundreds of employees uh, in a business that grew to be about $53 million that I discovered the learning advantage of gameplay firsthand, and that was totally out of necessity. Um, I was leading operations for a national eyewear retailer that was growing quickly, and it became pretty clear that my managers uh, did not understand the P&L statement or, the, sadly, the impact of their actions on the bottom line, and this was because they came from a lot of boutique optical, optical shops. Um, the solution du jour for that kind of issue was a line-by-line P&L slideshow that didn't help them do or perform what they needed to learn. So I decided to do something differently to get different results. Thank you, Albert Einstein. <laughs> I turned the P&L into a story, and I scripted my managers, my opticians, and my doctors into a board game experience. They became players with the learning goal of creating bottom-line successes together with every single decision they made every day. So the line items... Um, came off the slides and became story scenarios with bottom line impact that were learned in the context to achieve the goal. So the bottom line game, as we ended up calling it, was a, was a hit and success uh, because players practiced and applied what they learned 100% of the time while they played the game. And in less time than it took to sit through that uh, line by line slideshow. So that experience changed how LensCrafters happened to be the company, trained store teams, and it encouraged me to start my own learning game design business, which I'm still crazy about after 30 plus years. Let me ask you a question. That first time when you came, when you came to your boss and you said, you know what, instead of the slideshow, I created a game. Were you taken seriously? <laughs> I didn't tell my boss, Todd. <laughs> I just did it. But later my boss took credit for it and, yeah. um, and was given an award. Oh, well, that's great. So, so it worked out well for him and, and really for everybody else. <laughs> well, the, I, the idea of, of taking this information and these slideshows that we've all, we've all sat through the, the training sessions and, and whatnot and turning it into a game is fascinating. Um, you two, even listening to you, I, I can, you're coming from two different planets. How did the two of you come together to say, let's put strategy into a game? So Sue and I met as neighbors in the gorgeous mountains of New Mexico, and we were just comparing notes one day on what she did and what I did, and we discovered that we shared a passion for really helping organizations and individuals achieve that collective success. So we spent a few hours each week around our dining room table with our creative support team, which just happens to be our four amazing dogs, <laughs> and things just flowed from there. <laughs> Stellar staff, that's what you got. <laughs> Dogs. <laughs> well, the, and and the way I remember it, um, we did start at the dining room table at Brenda's house, sort of formally, um, and that was four years ago now. And a new dog, as a matter of fact, and then we sort of blew out to the kitchen table, Brenda, as I remember it, with prototypes and paper all over the place. And it was at one of those first uh, kitchen table conversations that Brenda showed me the strategy implementation workshop that she developed in mm -hmm. her, I think, her Silicon Valley year. And she used it with impressive results, um, a paper product. And she wondered, you know, could it could it be gamified to reach a broader audience? Because she was clearly passionate about the fact that this problem still existed in many organizations. And this was a solution that she had in her hands that truly helped people achieve success together. So we did something that only typically my mom or my husband or my great aunt asked me to do. Take all my games I made over the years and, you know, put them on the table and look at them. And, and so we did. We, we looked at some of the games I, I, uh, I developed, and we, we thought this was something worth tackling together. And, and these games covered a broad spectrum. Some of them taught business acumen to scientists and, and or selling skills to consultants or empowered behaviors to a whole hotel staff all over the world or, or innovation skills. And, and Brenda was struck by, by one thing because she's really good at getting to the, the heart of the matter. And she said, you know, all these games seem to have one thing in common, productive conversations. Uh, as she as she coined and and she said that they were generated by the players to achieve learning goals and she she noticed how that stood out, which was really great insight because I didn't figure out till later after I'd done the bottom line game and others that game science and learning science was was exactly that 
if you applied it to learning, you used narratives or stories, you used mechanics, and you used a lot of psychology so you could create these conversations and actions that, that achieve goals. And what I loved about Brenda's workshop concept was that it transformed strategies implementing or executing from getting that buy-in, you know, you know, head nods, mm -hmm. to getting everybody all in, head, heart, and feet. Um, and so we named it all in, in kind of a, a nickname for its outcomes, everybody included and inspired and intentioned. And, and we also gave it a tagline. We wrote a poem, too, but we gave it a tagline, um, move minds to move shoes, that we thought would sort of more poetically communicate the higher purpose of the game. And this is the idea that human beings cannot go all out if they're not all in. Hmm. I like that. That that had to be quite of a, a, a puzzle, though. I mean, if you're taking... Um, products let's call them or games that you had created for other organizations for specific reasons let's talk about that for a second i want to talk about how this game works i i mean like i interview company leaders all the time from around the world and i know that there are hot conversations that exist around engagement for example or employee satisfaction and commitment or retention and even recruitment how do you like how, how do you come up with something that how did you come up with this all in the concept of teaching people the role they play and how their work affects other people's work uh, Marcus Buckingham uses seven powerful words to describe basically what all employees want from leaders know me focus me and I'll stay so that, so that really gets to the core of the all-in concept and to some of those hot topics you mentioned, Todd, like, like engagement and satisfaction and retention. The all-in board game um, is an opportunity for any group of individuals to generate their own strategy implementation success story together by getting to know each other more deeply and by focusing their everyday strategic actions. Um, and there's another corporate strategist, Bob Leggy, uh, when he was talking to Forbes recently, he said, you know, when you connect strategy to every individual's role, you develop employee populations who act like owners. They, they just do the right thing with gusto because it's in their own interest and it's in everyone's best interest to do so. So, so the all-in game, um, players figure out that it takes everyone all-in, included, inspired, and intentioned, to win. Hmm. So where teaching people about the roles they play comes in during the game, mm -hmm. it's in the depth of the conversations. Everyone, and I seriously mean everyone, has a voice and is heard. And we hear that time and time again about one of the strengths of the game, one of the key strengths. But imagine a world or your own workplace, for example, where every single person shares that common purpose, the one vision and the clear line of sight. So. Every employee understands where to focus collectively and individually. And there was a survey that was reported in the Harvard Business Review, and it was more than 400 global CEOs. And they said that executional excellence was the number one challenge facing corporate leaders in Asia, Europe, the U.S., and it headed a list of over 80 issues. And it also stated that only 55% of the middle manager surveyed could name even one of their company's top five priorities. So, wow. yes, you heard that right. <laughs> Barely half could name even one. And it said that not only were strategic objectives poorly understood, but they often seemed unrelated to one another and then disconnected from the strategy overall. So. Sue speaks persuasively and quite eloquently, I'm at out about the effectiveness of game science for learning. And what we discovered is that while this serious play space is definitely come of age, and they call it edu games, mm -hmm. the edu game revenues are projected to surge to $7.3 billion by 2021. In every organization, in different forms and fashion, they're committed to strategy implementation, but no one had combined the two for game-based strategy implementation. So our unique value proposition and what we most want to share with the world is the powerful impact of game-based strategy implementation. And 
it's fresh, it's fun, and what's fun gets done. Well, it makes sense, too, because, I mean, all of us have, have we learn in different ways, and some of us are visual, and some of us are auditory, and, and kinesthetic, and so on and so on, and so, you know, putting this into a board game makes total sense. Um, let's talk about details. Uh, first, details of the game, and then details about whether or not it really works. Because I'm sure listeners are thinking, still, really, a board game can it be that effective? Can it be? Let's let give me the details. Yeah, absolutely. So we're all inundated with things that we just have to get done, mm-hmm. and people, even with the very best intentions, can sometimes fall into that trap of being really, really busy but struggling to maintain focus and then prioritize what's most important right now. So in a sense, striking that balance between long-term thinking with current action. So again, it's strategy implementation. And with all that activity overload, it can be extremely difficult to just pull your head up and understand coworkers' roles, priorities, how it all fits together. And you know, together is the only way we'll truly succeed. So. If you add to that dilemma the competing resources, it can be a formula for frustration or even worse. Yeah, totally. But gaming, gaming, do people are people buying into it now, Sue? Yes and no, but mostly yes. You know, that this is one of the reasons that Brenda just described this mm-hmm. overload and busyness. This is why effective learning games like like All In that provide a hundred percent application time, practice time. Are, are, are more and more preferred to other methods um, because they actually do help people better understand each other and focus and prioritize and perform. Brandon Carson um, uh, directs learning for all of Home Depot, uh, and he says, this is not easy stuff. Designing an effective learning game is hard. Uh, it requires a deep understanding of game mechanics and how to apply them appropriately with content to achieve a learning goal. And this is interesting because he says, you know, asking a player to passively consume content and then test their knowledge by playing a game, uh, it, it's not a true learning game. He's speaking to the fact that gameplay sometimes comes in as simply an afterthought and is not integrated into the game. So, so games have been around forever, and they're rapidly expanding into you know, every aspect of our lives, but they're still a relatively new learning you know, tool for, for learning and development uh, organizations. Some people still ask us, Todd, you know, if our game is like Monopoly or Jeopardy. Those mm-hmm. are the two favorites. Um, and, and that's what they know. Uh, they also ask us, you know, can we call it a simulation at our company rather than a game so people will take it seriously? Um, but, but we're also finding something else, and that's that leading organizations have, have figured out that a lot of traditional training does not come close to a game environment for feedback, for retention, and for results. Sharon Bowler is a, is a, a, a guru, a game designer, and an author, and she asked a great question of, of clients that want to create games uh, to, to teach people. She says, well, how much of your content are you willing for your employees to forget? Uh, and, yeah. and, and that's a great question because games, the retention in games is significantly higher, and, and people are using games, corporate, corporate use of games uh, uh, is on the rise. For example, every time any of us shop in a Target store. The entire Target store checkout process is a serious game uh, to increase speed and accuracy. Uh, Deloitte, Global Deloitte, the consulting firm, turned mm-hmm. their entire executive leadership training program and sales training into very addictive games. Um, Google, their expense reporting process is a game and so that they get more timely submissions and compliance. Johnson & Johnson recruits and retains nurses, and the list goes on. Walmart, Marriott, T-Mobile, Microsoft, household companies, using games now to improve performance and learning. And and games are learning, they're engaging, and they're science-based, and they work. So the learning advantages have been proven over and over again. Players report 99% post-play application, meaning how they actually use what they learn. Mm -hmm. Studies reveal that players retain 75% of what they learned after six months, compared to only 4% for traditional methods. And recent analysis also concludes that players develop self-efficacy, so the belief that you actually can achieve your goals at a 20% higher rate. Wow. Wow, that's awesome. Awesome numbers. And Todd, you know, you asked about a board game, like, come on, a board game? Yeah. And yet you also said there's that makes some sense. 
Um, and back to your point about learning, board game, board game it's, it's kinesthetic, it's visual, uh, it's audio, it's everything. So we, we absolutely purposefully chose a board game for all in instead of a digital environment for the better outcomes. Fortune Magazine just last month in its top leaders uh, uh, report um, spoke to the fact that top leaders are now choosing to bring people physically together because business research shows that when pe people meet in person face to face, they trust each other more. They become better problem solvers, and they're markedly more creative. We all know that we spiff up and, and act a little differently when we're face-to-face -face with someone. And, and learning research also shows that there's this resurgence in board games or, or tabletop games um, because people are actually coming together. There's a greater interest now in solutions like All In because they let people connect in real time. You know, it's interesting, too. I'm kind of still stuck on that... that uh comment that you said before where people and companies want it, they ask if they can call it a simulation but simulation to me means something totally different it takes away you know like the competitiveness for example of a game and so in all in you know there's competitiveness right absolutely it all in brings out the competitiveness uh that's natural in each of us and and uh and also um it's interesting that game research uh, by Jane McConaughey at Berkeley shows that the number one reason that millions of people play games around the world every day as often as they can, video, digital, uh, Facebook, other, is because they get to help people. They get to get good at something, and then they get to help people. You might say, no, they do it to win. They don't. The research hmm. shows that it's because I can help somebody. Um, and and so the, the gaming um, is... Uh, sorry, I lost my train of thought. That's all right. <laughs> Back to your question. Yeah. So, so if I'm playing all in, what am I going to learn? If I'm a participant, a gamer. You're a gamer. Hey, welcome to the gaming world. <laughs> so the all in board game, it's a self-directed game-based learning workshop. So it is serious play. It's fun. It's serious play. But combining the game science and the learning science with the strategy implementation all in really solves that universal human behavior challenge of moving the strategy from that whiteboard to the bottom line. And it really is a fun and inclusive way for teams to achieve those strategic goals. It aligns individuals for collective success, and we use a prioritization funneling process, if you will. So there's a series of six quests. It starts with the organization's purpose and the team's goals, and then it gets to the individual level of priorities, plan and measures, and rewards, and then wraps it all together with the results story. So by playing all in, the teams really learn how to plan together. They walk away with top priority plans, and they also decide collectively how to execute those plans together. I love that. I love the word quest. It makes me feel like I'm going to go slay a dragon. There you go. Get those dragons. <laughs> <laughs> and to your earlier question, Todd, the yes. Games are competitive, and they bring that out in people. And the, the, the unique twist in the all-in game is, is, is exactly the aha that Brent, Brenda will mention later about, I want to win this game, and I want to look good, and I want to perform well. So I'm competitive. I'm going to do whatever I need to do to win. Oh, my gosh. I learned during the game that I can't win unless everyone's all-in. So as I modify my behaviors to help others, during the game, the collaboration completely overtakes and everyone is figuring out how to get everyone all in to win. It's, it's a brilliant four-hour sort of metamorphosis uh, with people. In fact, one leadership team member uh, told us, and it's a virtual team that meets a couple times a year in a, in a physical space, they said the most powerful outcome um, of their all-in game experience was the opportunity to hear every voice at the table. Brenda referred to that earlier. Mm -hmm. And they said, you know, they have people who traditionally just sit in silence during a strategy planning session, or, of course, the, the folks that dominate the conversation. And then later, these same folks show, you know, little support for the decisions made by all those other people who did participate. But they were encouraged that, that the game mechanics and the goal of the game allowed every single person, because it's timed, um, you know, to speak, to listen, to learn, and to perform together. So it changed completely the way they ended up planning their strategy at that company. And then recently in Scottsdale, um, a, a player told us, and she was with a group of people from all, all different companies playing the all-in game. She said, this game replaces the need for an outside facilitator. You know, we facilitated the conversation ourselves. 
and we left with an actionable list of goals. Oftentimes during planning sessions, it's hard to recall the individual contributions that each person is making, but with it all in, it made the conversation not only actionable, but memorable, speaking to some of the stats we just read you earlier. Yeah, that's awesome. Because, I mean, you think about it, if, if you don't, you know, in a regular meeting, you may not say anything just because you know somebody else is going to make the decision anyway. But, you know, in this situation, it's you, you if you don't speak up, you lose. Nobody wants to lose. I'm, I'm curious. You really now, actually lose. <laughs> say that again. You really actually lose. Yes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Could you give it like a, a an easy example of like a situation that is created in the game that may may help us understand more? Like, what are we doing in the game? Yeah. So right at the beginning, there's an interesting set of decisions that that happen as the game is is self organizing. To so picture this, the game package sits in the middle of an empty table with eight players around it. So mm-hmm. they have to open it themselves, which is always kind of funny to watch, like who's going to touch it. Um, <laughs> and they have to figure out who they're going to figure out, you know, what to do and, and what to do with all the stuff inside. So they, they have to find and share instructions to even tell them what to do with the stuff they take out of the, the plastic envelope. They have to assemble game pieces, uh, put a game board together. They have to locate tw- test questions, which are actually on their smartphones at a specific URL. And they have to prepare their individual game maps that they're going to put all their, their content in and take back with them. So this is all before they even get to the rules. Now, this is strategic because their immediate decision-making opportunities achieve a couple of key outcomes. One, they involve every person in a, in a much more safe, fun activity to help diffuse those inevitable game day jitters like, I don't want to look stupid. Mm-hmm. And then secondly, they intentionally mimic how most work groups work anyway, autonomously. You know, you figure things out for yourself. That's awesome. Yeah, in addition to learning how to quickly and effectively plan and walking away with a plan to start working on right after game day, there are several aha moments we've observed. So, for example, people quickly learn the importance and also the delight in having the luxury to stop and breathe and really listen to everyone. So the relief they experience and knowing it doesn't all rest on their shoulders that each person plays a key role, it is truly liberating. Um, The creative problem solving and resource sharing is another one because I haven't seen a company yet that has enough resources to get everything done they think they need to do right now. Mm -hmm. And then having an ally long after game day helps stay on track. That's a favorite. And arguably most important of all is the discovery that you can't win the game or in business if everyone isn't all in together. That's awesome. I'm just thinking about everyone entering a room with no facilitator and just being like, it reminds me of one of those, you know, somebody's watching me through the mirror or something. <laughs> but I can see how effective because you, you obviously go, well, nobody's going to do this, so let's jump in. That's awesome. Um, I was just yeah. I was just poking around at your website. Um you two have racked up quite the reputation with some very reputable companies. If listeners want to learn more about you, the game, or your consulting practice, where's the best place to find out more? Thanks for asking that, Todd. So our website is allinboardgame.com. Easy. And there are links to our, yep, there are links to our Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn pages. And you can also find our contact information to buy games um, or to ask about custom game design or people strategy consulting. It's all included there. That's awesome. It's been a pleasure, you two. This sounds so much so much fun. I can't wait to play. Exciting. Thank you, Todd. Hey, wait. Thank you, Todd. I just had an, uh, I just had an extra thought. If I'm like, say I'm hosting a uh, conference or an event where it's not all one company, is this... Is all in board game something that could be played there with people from different companies, or is it something I should only play with my team? Uh, yeah, it's a all in's a perfect fit for a retreat or a training event or a conference workshop. Uh, really, for any group whose work affects each other, like we said at the outset. So the framework is designed so that every learning result is specific or custom to your organization. You buy one game pack for every group of four to eight players, which means, you know, the, the uh, number of people that can play is only limited by the number of 
tables, your budget, and, uh, and the room size. So the series of six quests takes a total of about three and a half to four hours. Ideally, that's all done at once, but it can also be effective with taking one quest each week, you know, at a staff meeting, for example. Hmm. And to your other question, our test groups included people in the same department in the same company, people in different departments in the same company, and also people in completely different companies and roles. And the dynamics do shift a bit, but all in can be equally effective in a variety of scenarios. It's just really important, though, that all players do have a vested interest in looking for ways to help others achieve and succeed. That's awesome. Thank you. That uh, sounds like so much fun. Um, thank you both for joining us today. Would you like to be featured as a guest on Great Work Insights? If yes, we want to hear from you. Leave us a comment with who you are and what you're all about at www.octanner.com. Also, remember to rate, review, and subscribe to all our podcasts on iTunes. Now get out there and build something beautiful. It's your turn now.